So I bought this boat on Facebook Marketplace. It's in Barnegat Light, New Jersey, and now I'm taking it from Barnegat Light to Cape May, from Cape May to Chesapeake City, from Chesapeake City to Pasadena, Maryland. And here she is, 42 foot boat. I don't know much about her. I know I already bought it. I know it's too late to not buy it. I know it was built by a guy named Moose in 1982. I know it's got an old engine with a ton of hours on it. So um, we'll see where it goes from here. I typically like to start my mornings at 4.30 with coffee, vitamin B, sometimes a banana, and a healthy dose of questioning your own existence and every decision you've ever made to you waking up at 4.30 in the morning to shoot a video of yourself in your kitchen. Of course, I've waited too long to try to pack a lunch and you just gotta throw in whatever you have. It, gotta, it gets to a point where you're just trying to find random stuff in your fridge to like bring with you. We got the hookup on the mini Slim Jims and I don't know. So here's the deal. I bought a boat, a really big boat. And it's in New Jersey, Barnegat Light, New Jersey. Now I've been planning this fiscally irresponsible move for quite some time. Despite what you might think by the look of shock on my face, because I actually woke up and the day was here to go pick it up. So I'm driving myself to Cape May, all right? The guy that I bought the boat from is actually gonna do the first leg of the journey with me, which is actually saying something because most people, when they sell a boat, they're like, hey, 50 foot warranty, can't see it from my house. This guy, pretty cool, his name's Jamie. I'm driving to Cape May, I'm gonna meet him in Cape May. I'm gonna leave my truck. I'm gonna hop in with him and his buddy. They're gonna leave one of their trucks. We're gonna drive to New Jersey. Me and him are gonna, me and Jamie are gonna hop on the boat and then we're gonna drive it to Cape May, tie it up. He's gonna hop in his truck and go home. I'm gonna hop in my truck and go home. That is if my truck makes it there. That's the first step in pretty much anything that I do. It's always a wild card and you never really know if my truck's actually gonna make it. I don't drive particularly nice vehicles. I don't typically go very far. Uh, so a three hour journey is, is really something for me. Ah yes, old reliable, the old golden arches at Lakeshore Plaza. I'm actually a sucker for McDonald's breakfast. I don't get it very much, but I figured today if my mental health and my wallet have to suffer, why not my gut too? I got these really fancy power windows. I'm the power. Ah yes. The familiar taste of mediocrity. I'm loving it. We will see you in Cape May, if the truck makes it there. I think I'm giving it like, I'm gonna give her bet nods. 85%. I'm 85% certain that we're probably gonna make it, which is pretty good for me. Problem is here, I really am thirsty. I actually forgot to pack water with me. And I've now hit the stretch of road where uh, no gas station is really safe to go at really any time, particularly 5.30 in the morning. I'm going up above uh, Balmer City right now. I just passed the, uh, the Rofo on Belgrove Road, which I thought about, but not for too long. I mean, everybody's been there, mostly to go buy like Rellos or something at like midnight. But other than that, I try to steer clear of pretty much everywhere on Belgrove Road, particularly places that are too close to bingo world if you know you know i might have to just wait or as my dad used to tell us just save up your spit and swallow it <laughs> i'm here at a sketchy gas station in new jersey which i think is only better than a sketchy gas station in Bulmer city because i don't know this area so to me it just seems like another gas station someone's gonna know this gas station i know it Drop a comment and let me know what you think about this, but in the morning, before you leave the house, if your old lady says, be safe, and you know that just by the nature of what you're doing, it's indeed not safe, and you say, okay, 
Is it still lying? You see, my life has uh, become far too easy and simple. So uh, this week I not only got engaged, but I also, you know, bought another boat. Um, I was tired of things just going too smoothly, so I thought I'd double down, you know what I mean? So now I'm on my way to pick up the boat, and uh, no better way to celebrate than to put myself in time out for six hours on a boat ride and think about what I've done. Well, we are officially here at the marina. It is 8 a.m. right now. I'm betting we'll be here back here by four. Here we are in Barnegat Light, and here she is. 42 foot boat. I don't know much about her. I know I already bought it. I know it's too late to not buy it. I know it was built by a guy named Moose in 1982. I know it's got an old engine with a ton of hours on it. So um, we'll see where it goes from here. He really is really something. Look at all this room for activity. We are off leaving Barnegat Light in the new boat. This is Jamie. The guy selling me the boat, which is actually saying something that the guy that's selling you the boat is willing to take it down the ocean with you. We'll be fine. <laughs> well, you heard it here, folks. We'll be fine. I think we'll be all right. I've seen movies that start out like this. There we go. Leaving Barnegat Light. In the Weibo. I guess that's Barnegat Light. I have a good friend of mine that you guys might recognize is going to join me for the second half of the trip. But today we're leaving Barnegat Light. We're going to Cape May. This boat is a 42 foot wood core boat it's called. It's a method of building where they would build a fiberglass boat without a mold. It's got a 300 horsepower lugger diesel engine in it with like 19,000 hours, a ton of hours. But I tell you what, this boat is a brick freaking shit house here. This thing is solid as it comes. It's a pretty cool boat. It's actually built as a Chesapeake Dead Rise style boat. It's a hybrid of a lobster boat and a Dead Rise. It's kind of a one-off. In your normal crab boat, your motor would be a little further astern. But in this boat, the motor's right behind the cabin. There's also some cool stuff about this boat. It's got a walk-through cabin. It's got a door on either side. The steering is on the port side in the helm, which is abnormal. Usually, boats all have steering on the starboard side. You know it's a good purchase when it comes with a big can of peanut butter blaster there. It's pretty much got everything that a work boat should have. Some sponges that never get used, half-drank bottles of water rolling around, an assortment of electrical tape, switches and things that who knows if they work, stickers, that's some that looks like my handiwork there. And a hat. I mean, this thing is, I don't know, it's, it's too nice for me, I think. It's not often that I actually buy something that that starts when you turn the key. How many hours are on this thing? Does it have an hour meter? Yeah, 18,315. 18,000 hours on her. I think she's just getting broke in. You want to go the smooth way or the bumpy way? The smooth way or the bumpy way? I don't know. What do you think? What do you suggest? The smooth way or the bumpy way? What do you think? You're the expert here. Okay, we'll go that way. That's good enough for me. We're out of here, folks. We're going that way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Holy crap. Just like the Chesapeake Bay, right? <laughs> yeah, we are not in the bay. Like an eight foot tall wave there. Oh, everything in here just went zero gravity for a minute. <laughs> I think I aged a year in that, that one second right there. 
<laughs> Jamie ain't worried. He said Coast Guard's right over there. He'll see us before we drown. We'll be all right. <laughs> These boys from Jersey are wild. <laughs> they ain't scared. There's a Coast Guard out there. Hopefully we don't need to see them. Good to know they're there, though. I suppose. It's always a relief to see the Coast Guard, and they're not either trying to board your vessel or pull you out of the water because you're drowning. <laughs> the windshield wipers are pretty nice on this thing. They're they're top notch, high tech. I'm really bad when they I, stop working. I, I, I can, yeah, I can, hey, if the windshield wipers in this stop working, you really got a problem. <laughs> That's the bumpy way? Oh yeah, that looks a little bumpy. Oh my god. Yeah, that looks like the bumpy way there. So this is about home for the next probably about six hours or so. We'll get a little tour here. This thing is far too nice for me. I'm usually used to buying things that I have to pump out and get up off the bottom and then get started. You gotta bring your BYOB, you know what I mean? Bring your own battery. This one actually had one. It even looks like it maybe has a spare dead one in the cabin. That's good stuff around here. And this son of a gun has heat. That or something's about to catch on fire. I'm not sure. It's pretty good down here, though. Some valves. Not sure what they do. I don't know what that thing is. I think this is the heat tube here. Feels warm. Some miscellaneous wiring held up with zip ties. Oh yeah, life jackets. Hopefully we don't need those. I'll surely be using these electrical connectors off the ground for the years to come. We got belts, belts that don't even go to this boat, but we have them, you know, why not? I'll tell you, this deal just keeps getting better and better. And the more I look around and I get to know this boat, the more I realize that it was really meant to be. It's got all the trademarks of something I would own. It's got loose wires that don't do anything. Zip ties just hanging out. Buttons and lights that probably been burnt out for a decade. Electronics that I don't know how to use. This throttle has about the same friction pin as uh, a lot of other boats I've had. That's pretty standard in the fishing industry. Something was smoking. Jamie's back there taking care of that. I'm not... Uh... Not too worried about that. I think it's fine. This is on brand. We're still moving and it's still running. So I think we're in good shape. So it is about 1 o'clock. We've been making pretty good time for this thing. We're doing about 11 knots right now. We are about the halfway point. There's Atlantic City. I think we might stop. Maybe do a little crabbing in Atlantic City. I'm not sure those are the kinds of crabs I want to take home with me, though. I have a gambling man, but I, I prefer to lose my money in harder ways, like buying boats like this. And I like to work really hard to lose it. That's too fast and easy. Anybody can lose it like that. We got about 16 miles left till Cape May. Picking up a beam C a little bit, but this thing is solid, I'm telling you. This boat. Solid. It's a little heavy. She's solid. And Jamie had a good point. He just said that me and him are both having the best day of owning a boat. The day that you buy it and the day, the day that you sell it. <laughs> so it's working out pretty good for both of us, I'd say. That's why we're both smiling. That's right. <laughs> four, four miles till Cape May. We'll tie her up. You'll go home to Barnabas. I'll go home to Pasadena. And we're just gonna leave this thing there. We'll never, neither one of us will ever see it again. <laughs> now it's actually been, they're both growing on me. I like it, I like it. It wouldn't matter if I didn't, I'm, I'm stuck with it. I'm, I'm stuck with it anyway. <laughs> I like it. Well, I'm hesitant to say it because we're not tied to shore, but uh, we made it to Cape May, actually. Pretty crazy. There's the uh, water tower over there. We're pulling into the marina, get some fuel tire up here and then me and my buddy that you guys probably recognize are gonna do the second and maybe even the third leg together from Cape May to Chesapeake City 
in Chesapeake City to home. This boat, it's impressive. And I've gotten to like it a lot on this journey. It, uh, it runs suspiciously good. It's far too nice for me. I only smell a little bit of coolant, a little bit of oil. And it's not smoking profusely or leaking anything. It's suspicious, suspicious. Well, made it to Cape May, safe and sound. Boat ran suspiciously well. I'm tied up, paid up for three days. I don't, although I hope I can get it out of here really soon because it is a lot more expensive than I anticipated. Probably because there's so many people here tied up. There's just an immense amount of boat traffic here at this time of year. Pretty much every slip is filled, so I guess I gotta pay for everybody that isn't using one here too, but is what it is. I am relieved to be back. It was a long day of travel, and now I have a three hour car ride home to uh, think about the decision that I've made. First leg of the journey is down from Barnegat Light to Cape May. Now we gotta go from Cape May to Chesapeake City. But uh, like and subscribe, please, because this dockage is really expensive. And um, I'm trying not to go broke, and this thing burns a lot of diesel. So hit the subscribe button, like, and leave me a comment. Let me know how stupid you think I am for buying this thing. 